if you can convince a large group of people that investigating or believing in such information is crazy then people start policing each other they want to adapt to the herd and most people will be concerned with their image and they don't want to be perceived by family or friends as crazy so they won't even bother to try to understand this information they won't even bother to try to investigate it objectively all right this is mike sigula from truefield.com welcome to another vlog so this video will start a series of videos where we're going to talk about different techniques that are often used to control large groups of people, to control the population. And I think there is no secret that, you know, we always had this pyramid-like structure where we had few people on the top, the ruling class, the controlling elite that will do anything they can to be in power, to be in their position. They never want to give it away. You know, we might see society very different these days, but the rules never change. Thousands of years have passed and we still have the bottom majority that works extremely hard just to survive and the top few that have more power than most of the people on the planet. So I don't think this is any conspiracy or anything like that, but in this series, I want to give you examples of what kind of techniques are being used by these people, by authority figures, by politicians, by corporations, etc. And the first technique is use of fear-based tactics. And media is a perfect example of this technique. So some of you might know in the US, we have six corporations that run most of the media and if you want to understand a little bit more about how media works in the us for example and elsewhere as well i suggest to check out this free documentary titled who rules america the power of media propaganda you can watch it on truefury.com or you can find it on youtube for free as well and i have been uh, involved in media for more than 10 years and throughout this time you know, I work with journalists, I, I know many journalists, some of the actually even top independent journalists on the planet. I have dealt with people involved in media and I think I have some good understanding of how some of this stuff works. And I can tell you that media feeds on sensationalism and fear. If you pay attention to news, it's very obvious that most of the news is negative. There is this theory that throughout our evolution, any kind of bad news could mean the end of your life. So we develop these mechanisms to pay more attention towards bad news. So apparently media taps into this mechanism and that's why you have breaking news and most of the stuff is all about what's wrong in the world and all this kind of stuff because that makes you alert to the information basically however a lot of the content is often blown out of proportions and designed to make us click and when people live in fear it is much easier to manipulate them and we often live in fear of things that do not really cause us any real threat this is important because all this stuff going on all the fear mongering doesn't really impact us directly very often or we cannot really seriously influence that so this information in a way it's pointless to some extent you know it's good to understand what's going on what are the problems but once it starts affecting our mood our mental health etc that becomes dangerous this stuff often creates stress that is completely unnecessary and fear can often impact our decision making and clear thinking and when we are in fight or flight mode we often act impulsively and we often don't have time to question validity of claims as well. So let me give you an example of how unjustified fear can be dangerous and even deadly. So after 9-11 attacks in the US, many people decided to drive more instead of using airplanes. So in the months after the 2001 terror attacks, passenger miles on the main US airlines fell by between 12% and 20% 
while road use jumped. The change is widely believed to have been caused by concerned passengers opting to drive rather than fly. Traveling long distances by car is more dangerous than traveling the same distance by plane. So Professor Gert Gigerenzer, a German academic specializing in risk, has estimated that an extra 1,595 Americans died in car accidents in the year after the attacks. Another researcher, Michael Rothschild from the University of Wisconsin, calculated the risk of a traveler who took four flights every month, dying as a result of terror attacks. If hijackers managed to destroy one plane a month, he argued, this frequent traveler had one in 540,000 chance of being killed. At one plane a year, the risk was less than one in six million. In contrast, the risk of being killed in a US car accident in any given year is one in 7,000. So basically what they say is that you have much higher chance of actually being killed in a car crash than from uh, terror attacks on the airplanes. And other researchers also say that, you know, you have actually much higher chance in dying in a car accident than on an airplane overall. So number two is social conformity. So ego is one of the most fundamental aspects of our psyche and those who want to control us very often tap into this mechanism and I'll show you how. So most people are concerned with what other people think of them. This is why, for example, social media is such a powerful phenomenon because we care what other people think of us. We want to be liked by others. We want to get those likes from strangers on Facebook and Instagram. Anyway, just kidding. But we care what other people think of us, really. And before I will share some examples of how this method is used, I want to give you some examples of psychological experiments that illustrate this phenomenon. So first example is so-called Ash Conformity Experiment. So in 1951, Solomon Ash, a pioneer in social psychology, conducted one of his first social conformity experiments. So you had a group of few male students who participated in simple perceptual tasks, but in reality, all but one of participants were actors. And the true focus of the study was about how the remaining participant would react to the behavior of the actors. But an experiment is not a public opinion poll. It examines behavior under the pressure of social forces, as the experiment of Solomon Ash reveals. The experiment you'll be taking part in today involves the perception of lengths of lines. As you can see here, I have a number of cards, and on each card there are several lines. Your task is a very simple one. You're to look at the line on the left and determine which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. All right, we'll proceed in this order. You'll give your answer. Only one of the people in the group is a real subject, the fifth person with the white t-shirt. The others are confederates of the experimenter and have been told to give wrong answers on some of the trials. The experiment begins uneventfully as subjects give their judgments. Two, 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 three, 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 three. But on the third trial, something happens. Two, 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 uh, two. The subject denies the evidence of his own eyes and yields to group influence. One. Ash found subjects went along with the group on 37% of the critical trials. One. But he found through interviews One. that they went along with the group for different reasons. One. One. They must be right. There are four of them and one of me. Uh, one. This subject's yielding is based on a distortion of his judgment. He genuinely believes that the group is correct. So here is another example of a very similar experiment. So in the series by National Geographic called Brain Games, a similar experiment was conducted. So you had a waiting room for an eye doctor's office filled with actors who knew about the experiment. 
and there was one lady who was a subject of the experiment and she thought she came for her eye exam and at some point we hear the sound in the room and all people stand up for no apparent reason and the lady also started copying what everyone was doing basically to answer that question, we set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone, simply because everyone else is. You might be thinking you'd never go along with this. Or would you? After just three beeps, and without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. But what happens if we take the group away? Elaine, please. Okay, now she's alone, the crowd is gone, and nobody is watching her, except our hidden cameras. What do you think she'll do? She's now conforming to the rules of the group without them even being there. So I just showed you two examples of how powerful this technique is. And most of us actually are constantly manipulated through the use of this technique without us even knowing that. So one of the more interesting ways of how this technique is used is the following. So let's say you're some authority figure, government, corporation, etc., and you committed a crime or lie and you want to hide this information. The simplest way to do it is to convince everyone that believing in such information is lunacy, is crazy, is ridiculous. You know, calling people crazy conspiracy theorists, tinfoil hat. If you can convince large group of people that investigating or believing in such information is crazy then people start policing each other they want to adapt to the herd and most people will be concerned with their image and they don't want to be perceived by family or friends as crazy so they won't even bother to try to understand this information they won't even bother to try to investigate it objectively so people start policing each other in this way you start doing what everyone else is doing right you start thinking what everyone else thinks so let me give you an example of how this can work so let's say you have a teenager who becomes interested in ufos and and he comes to his uncle and starts asking some questions and the uncle is programmed and he gonna be like oh don't be silly aliens do not exist if they would exist they will be all over the news nasa would tell us about it blah 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 so now this teenager might think that even asking such question is crazy ridiculous and he doesn't want to be laughed at right so you start programming someone to not think for themselves since the very early age already and we do it without even understanding that we actually are doing it okay so this was part one of this series where i talk about examples of techniques that are used to control large groups of people if you found this information useful please share this video it helps so much when you guys actually share this information if you're new to this channel please subscribe let me know in the comments what do you think about these techniques and part two of this video is available only for our patreon supporters people who support us on patreon help us to create free content and thanks to you guys we can actually create more and more content so if you want to help us out and you want to watch part two of this video as well and have access to exclusive content please check out patreon.com forward slash truth theory and thanks a lot for checking this video and till next time